We got to know. Once you do that, you now know something new about yourself. Oh, so you could give up the pathologos. Well, also you you you, you realize that uh, you can play a more decisive role in the world of dreams. And that adds to the assumption, or a parallel, that in the daily world you're not subject to the confusion that exists in the upper in the everyday world. So in See, sense. this is not. I am not reasoning theoretically. <laughs> this is the voice of experience. <laughs> yeah. When I was a kid, I had such night <laughs> such nightmares. They're so terrible that I refused to go to sleep. I'd fight sleep. Every night I'd fight sleep until finally I'd have to pass, pass on. And, you know, it was pretty groggy in the morning, you know, fighting for several hours and then wake up with two hours sleep. Until one night I got so pissed off, you know, I said, you know what I'm going to do? Next time I get one of these oh, scary, scary dreams, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. I'm not going to just sit there and get scared the hell out of it. <laughs> so the next night, along it came, a terrible dream. And I knew I opened that door. Behind it was that same kind of drama with all the ferocity. And I said, I opened the other door. That ended the nightmares. See, but I, I there's, a, there's a growth that takes place yeah, in dreams see, with lucid that, dreaming. Is my point. I want to. I want to say the other way. I want to say there's a Pierre out there who who would have told me years ago you missed the opportunity mm. for insight by doing that. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that happens uh, uh, not infrequently. So great. Now you don't have nightmares, but you also don't understand. Okay. There's yeah, no that's understanding absolute, what was causing hey, it. That's absolutely right. There's a way of growing where you jump over things you don't understand. It doesn't mean you're not going to find other things you don't understand, which you're not going to be able to jump through. Oh, man, that's... You're sexist. Say, ah, women once in a while. (laughs) I mean, that's why they sing hymns instead of hers. You know, ah, men instead of ah, women. Is that a, a different kind of growth, though? Like, are you actually, are you yeah. actually growing, or is that just that's like, is it the same? Is it is that actually growing if you just jump over it? No, no, it's, it's, it all depends on what you want to call growth. It's all growth. Um, I could wake up the next morning and I could say, hey, you know what? It's important to make a decision. That's right. You committed. You changed. Yeah. And maybe the point was was just learning to take an active role for a change. Yeah. But we don't know. That's the whole thing. It's but like that could but that had ruinous effect on my life, though. Though I acted out. Post legate. Yeah. How do you how how so? How do you? Say? Well, now I could act more directly. <laughs> Like uh, what happened with me, though, if you don't mind a, a, a story. Um, uh, my mother used to dress me up. She was French and my, you know, Dutch, whatever the hell she was. And behind it all, Spanish and um, father Irish American. But anyhow, she used to dress me in European style with buttons on your sweater along here. So I used to walk out in school and I'd just get punched. Somebody would come and say, I don't, I don't like your face. Pow! You know, I once went through this for a long time until I finally got this one guy, he's an Italian, toughest guy in the school. And I said, I want you to teach me how to fight. He said, only one way. I said, I'll go for it. So we used to go down on the street and every, every day for months it beat me up until I learned how to fight. <laughs> what a pal! Yeah, that was, <laughs> but but the, the real crisis was. So, I was the teacher's pet. 
see, in the fourth grade. I was a tall guy, thin guy. And she said, you're going to be the hero in the next play. And we'll have it before the whole school. Mm. And I went, oh, sure, okay. In, this, in the play was a fight scene. Uh, yeah. And she picked a, a red-headed, short, little uh, Irishman. <laughs> I lived in an Irish neighborhood. Across the street from us was the blacks. Nice Down the street was the Italian neighborhood. Right. Two blocks further was the Jewish neighborhood, you know, a we we real nice New York City place to live. Mm -hmm. so I said, wait a minute, I'm going to fight this guy in public. I'm the big guy, he's the short guy, he's Irish. All of his friends in the school, and they're going to, yeah, that's what they did. They had special, they'd get him out, they'd try to teach him how to play fight dirty and all this. It built up a whole big thing going on. So I'm in class and I figure, you know, there's only one way to get through this. I think I'll do it. So I picked up a piece of chalk. The teacher was turned around to write on the board and I bing, beamed her. She said, who did that? I said, I did it. <laughs> she said, you know, you do that again, you're not going to... Oh, no. <laughs> so I did it. I said, wait a minute. Here's another piece of chalk. <laughs> bing! She got furious. She said, you're out of the play. I said, thank you, dear. <laughs> nice work around. Yeah, so, well, I mean, it gave me a bit, a bit of freedom, but I had to pay the price for it, you know. Well, what was the then they that? called the school psychiatrist, and I had to go before the school, school psychiatrist and ask me what was going on. They gave me a bunch of pictures to take a look at, you know. And they, you know, they said, hey, there's something wrong with that guy. He acts out violently. They never figured out, hey, there's a good reason. <laughs> yeah. What are the pictures? Oh, they have these fancy <laughs> pictures. You're supposed to tell them what you see on it. Oh, Russia, of course. Yeah, also, eight, eight, later on, it's ATA or TAT pictures. Okay. Thematic apperception, TPT, you know. So that's why later they, they looked with great fondness and called me in when I was 16 and they said, we are happy to tell you we can kick you out now. So I got kicked out when I was 16. God bless America. <laughs> I said, thank you. You could argue this, this kind of, uh, I mean, this is, <clears throat> this is, uh, Evidence of self, oneself. Well, just, but yeah, is it, uh, clean. Do yeah, it. But is that, uh, don't get stuck. But the group I was with, you know, it's a very low-level kind of. <laughs> no. I mean, the story That's a shame. Do it. That's a shame. Yeah. Pardon me. That's a shame. Yeah. The culture. Of yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Haven't yeah. established self. Well, yet. you know. Uh, Like, I, I never had a chance to talk to any teacher until I one, once got in high school, and one teacher said, hey, anyone want to clean my board? I said, yeah, I'll clean your board. So I cleaned his board in the morning, and I got straight A's, first time, <laughs> first time in my whole school career. And then he had a group, and they were all talking together, and he said, uh, teacher said, who's the smartest guy in this, uh, among you? And they pointed to me, and he said, oh, him? He just does my board. And I said, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you know what you said? I said, yeah, I know. I said, fuck you. He said, you're out. I think I'd get it out again. Wow. <laughs> Interesting lesson he was teaching, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, I thought, I, was, I thought he was real. I thought I was real, and I finally found someone who was real, so I got straight A's. Until that event, and that ended that. Quo, quo. Yeah. Um, but I want to go back to your, unless you have more stories. No, I'd better, really better leave them behind. It depends on what you call growth, is, is kind of where we split off, right? So I can see that that's certainly a growth. Yeah, um, but... In, in a, but I also liked what you said, you added, if I caught it correctly, that um, 
if there truly was a lesson behind door number one, it is going to it's still likely to show up in some other way later on down the line. Oh. So I can accept that. Fine. So you're in a lucid state and you decide to skip that one for now. Um, take a different line of growth. Um, so in that, what I guess I guess the conclusion is that the internal integrity of the dream that the dream master has laid on you, uh, you're you're giving up for now. You're saying I I'm not going to follow that, right? Well, that's that's not allowing for levels of dropping away. If they, if you're dropping something aside for a while, or if you're dropping it away completely, or if you've forgotten it, um, all of those could um, still create a life situation that, that is but, meaningful, but, but you don't have the midwifery problem. Right, so you can say, well, I'll drop it for, for now, not forever. Well, I wouldn't do that. If I had a choice, I'd drop it forever. But, of course, all of us would, but I'm saying, uh, I, I think, I guess, what's underlying my question is, uh, who's wiser, me or, or the dream master? Pardon me? Who is wiser, me or the dream master? Well, that's not much. <laughs> that's not much of a problem. Why? <laughs> Certainly, the dream master. Right. I think so too. Hmm? So if I pick door number two, I'm saying uh, I disagree with that statement. I'm wiser. Well, now you see, uh, events can can occur in life that. Uh, um, that in the dream world uh, uh, come as a surprise and, and totally uh, a ben benefit to man, like certain dreams that you people know of that we've looked at, that can have a profound effect on one's life and one's future dream world. Sure, but... But that shifted the, the question. Shifted. I hope you didn't follow it. I Notice. <laughs> anyway, but wouldn't wouldn't if 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 what Pierre did wasn't the expected outcome or or best outcome uh, desired by the dream master? Wouldn't he have had dreams that corrected? Like that's always been the assumption. If you make a mistake, you know, if you this is actually used with respect to our understanding of dreams. That if we make a mistake in our understanding of dreams that we will get a dream that will correct our lack of understanding. seems to me if Pierre wasn't intended to get that insight into how to avoid the, the nightmares or whatever, how to end the nightmares, that he would have gotten um, a, a dream from the dream master that, that didn't have that escape path available if the goal was to deal in a different way. It seems to me. So you're, you, what you're allowing for is the dream master had foresight enough to know that Pierre would be in the lucid state on this particular. Yeah, yeah, night. I am actually. I accounted for that. That's that's one of the. Uh, uh, okay. See, Good. Like, why is it that uh, invariably for 20 years or more, uh, the third day at Esalen, people always oh, yeah. had dreams about Esalen. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. What? Did you have a correct, yeah. like a correcting dream that addressed that issue? Oh yeah. yeah. So in a way, the dream master is, uh, functions through the logos, mm. and the logos has priority. So whatever happens to someone, if it's a result of a kind of reflection or development of the logos, correspondingly, the dreams are going to correspond. Mm -hmm. And so when you think in this case, uh, are you talking about, um, when you refer to the logos, you're talking about the reasoning and discussion and dialogue that's happening in those first three days? Yeah. And then the dream master uh, designed whatever within that context. Yeah. Same reason why people who are reading Timaeus or mm -hmm. whatever Plato mm -hmm. will it will come up in there. Yeah. It's kind of, the the logos takes priority. Yeah. I love why? that. Why? Hmm? 
Hmm? Why is that the case? Why does the Logos take part? I mean, like, he's going to contextualize it within something you've been putting your mind on, reflecting on it at a higher level. Is it because the Logos is operating at a higher level and that he can deliver the... I mean, why? why? Sure. Because, the, you know, because fundamentally, the universe is intelligible. It's just a mark of its intelligibility. So if you have been spending your time on something that's uh, at a higher intelligible mm -hmm. level, it's that sort of substratum mm -hmm. or that, that milieu or whatever that, in this case, the lo it's going to be that logos that the message gets delivered through? That uh, may allow a development while still retaining whatever pathologos exists in the soul of each individual. Oh, that's taking it in a different... Could, could you say that again? Well, the, the, the richest spiritual experience is not going to affect the pathologos. No, I understand. But, but there's only one thing that's more powerful than, than uh, spiritual experience, that's the Logos. I love that you said enlightenment is hmm? a myth. I love that you said enlightenment is a myth. Well, you know, there are all kinds of stories all over the place of uh, people gaining enlightenment experience and they still play out their pathologies. It's common. Matter of fact, they should expect it. They don't, they get in trouble. So those first three days at Esalen will always have a logos associated with them depending on what mm -hmm. we are or you are exploring. And the dreams that come up for us as participants are within that context of that logos. Mm -hmm. Because it's meaningful. And because it's meaningful, oh. it... Otherwise it wouldn't. <clears throat> it's more... It has more unity. It has yeah. more... It's... You don't have to memorize it. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of, um, what's the quote, you should put what you should put your mind on before bed? Sure. Beautiful things and all that. Yeah. Rational things. Nice. Yeah. There's a lot of symmetry going on there. Uh, it's kind of like... Um, following the logos during the day provokes a response in your dreaming life. Mm -hmm. There's a strong symmetry there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've noticed that when I'm engaged in the logos, like after a seminar, especially, um, it like, it heightens my dream, dream world. Oh, yeah, good. Yes. Like, yeah. See, the other thing is that there are many enlightenment experiences that many a Roshi says, and unless the subject continually meditates on it and keeps it alive, it'll just pass away in, in memory. But there ain't going to be any pathologos that's going to pass away because of <laughs> lack of reflection on it. <laughs> because it continually reflects upon itself. What I like about the Tibetans is they have a dream tradition. What? The Tibetans, what I like about them, say, as opposed to the, uh, the Zen tradition, is that uh, uh, getting in the lucid state in a dream, mm -hmm. and also the Bon tradition before them, as we were saying, no. um, but not just the lucid state itself, uh, reflecting on the content of the dream. 
is very much part of their training. Sure, sure, sure. Um, the Tibetan, if you're in, I, you're in the Tibetan Yoga yeah. and Secret Doctrines? Uh, no, or I, which I one? found out about it somewhere else. But okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Because Evans Rance has the greatest collection of Tibetan literature. Hmm. Yeah, you probably found it somewhere else, but it's... Okay, yeah, no, I, but I've got the book, I just haven't gotten to it. I'll look, you know, take it. Just... <clears throat> Tibetans were giants. Can you, can you get insight into a path of logos? Um, using lucidity? No. You have to use dialogue. Can you use another character in your dream to dialogue with? That would, yes, that would finish it. I don't know what that would. Because that's what the Bond people are saying. They're saying, hey, once you get lucid enough, you can turn around and ask any of the characters in your dream whatever question you want. I'm thinking, well, let's dialogue, baby. Let's do some midwifery. <laughs> Uh, show me the past scene where I, I developed my anxiety. Show me, you know, hey. And you're really just talking to yourself, ostensibly. You're having a dialogue with yourself, ultimately, right? Well, it all depends on what, kind of, it all depends on what kind of dialogue you have. That's, what, that's, what, that's the puzzle for me. Is like, well, how far can you if it's it? it fu- see, midwifery and dream analysis is a dialectic. Why is it a dialectic? because it uses the same kinds of questions and the same approach again and again and confirms the conclusions within a person's experience again and again. Whether you're talking about tracing out a pathologos or a dream. And it's open to all cultures. So All, all people are the same. They have the same mind. So we might conclude then that you, while you could try to have, you could try to follow a dialectic if you had enough lucidity in the dream, nonetheless you yeah, would... All you need is one sentence, but go ahead. Well, I, given where I wanted to go and where you want to go, <laughs> I'll always go with you. Go ahead. What's the one sentence? All you need is one sentence. We had right. several dreams tonight. It was only one sentence. Which was? Are you saying the sentence can be different, but you have to see it? Or are you saying this is part of the dialectic? It means just With the, the dialectic, the, sen- the dream itself doesn't have to be more than one sentence. That's what you mean. Matter of fact, right. if, if we could get one, one image, one word would do it, because they're holistic. I remember at Esalen once uh, Barbara came in with a rubber ducky image that, that, we, that we passed on the way up uh, along PCH, I think. It was in a window or something. And then later you dreamed it again or something, and it was a single image. You were, you were asking us specifically for fragments that yeah. time. Tangents. Just that belied any that. random thought we asked. Even, yeah, any... Mm-hmm. Right. That's the depth that you would expect to have in... Um, Becoming rational in a dream. Um, that that uh, if you could maintain the dialectic in the dream, I guess that would be twice. Oh. Yeah. Oh. But if we okay, there so is nothing right. in the mind that is irrational. It's all meaningful. No passing thought. No random thought. No. It's all meaningful. You know, Stephen LaBerge, who articulated yes, the, the lucid dreaming yeah, experimenter. You know. He, similar to Pierre, had trouble going to sleep because he was plagued by this monster that would come running after him at night in his dream. So one night he told himself, okay, tonight when I have the monster, I'm going to ask, turn around and ask the monster what he wants. And he did. I didn't In the dream. Him. He turned around and said, what do you want? No, and I as didn't. soon as he asked no, 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 that... I, I don't mind you changing the story. No, no, no. She's saying Stephen LeBurge did this, not you. This other guy. Had okay. It. In a lucid dream. This oh, is his. You're saying you read that also and it was a different story? Oh, I didn't. 
Yeah, she's so talking about this other. He said as soon as he asked the question, the monster just came into his solar plexus and just dispersed in the smoke. Yeah. And he never had them again. Well, so this is but actually this is how the, his this, summary was that yeah. through lucid dreaming you can get courage. Well, this is your example. No, I like mine. <laughs> Choosing the alternate door, you like it better. Well, if, uh, I don't mind other people having other experiences. It's, they, yes. they can certainly offer them. But what I wanted to say earlier was I, I think my guess is that um, even if you could get enough to, to a, uh, a, ni a nice level of lucidity enough in your dream to begin to apply a, dile a dialectic on the contents of what yeah. you just saw, you would still have the same problem that you would have in waking life in that being your own midwife is essentially by its own nature impossible because you don't see the nature of your own problem. You can't ask the right questions. And that would, you'd face that same problem in a dream state just as you would in a waking state, yes? Well, I just said it's a, uh, uh, You know, it's very. It's a, <clears throat> there's a certain level of conjecture and possibility when you're threading events and calling them meaningful because of this, that, and the other thing. You know, um, I'm assuming in this discussion that the lucid dreaming added a certain dimension to my being, which I then played out in a variety of ways. That's that's a conclusion that's tentative because maybe there are other things equally significant that I haven't thought of. But uh, but there are a number of you know there are a whole bunch of things that that uh, uh, cost me for acting out on my own and. Uh, uh, like I was in the service and, and for three years I was running a six-man squad and they never gave me the three stripes as a, st a staff sergeant because I'd always act out my own way of being and every time we got in the rear and therefore they got pissed off at me. And, but um, on the other hand, I went through many scenes where I acted individually that saved many a person's lives. Yes. And, uh, yeah. uh, and also got me <clears throat> equally well in trouble. <laughs> well. And, you know, when you act independently in the service, you yeah. know, they don't like that. But, uh, I like the story that you tell us about uh, <clears throat> not coming back the same way that you, you left. Oh, that and one. Using <laughs> the sights of your fellow man. Yeah. But nonetheless, you survived. I have a question. Uh, what was it for you that made you realize that dreams were so important? Pardon me? What was it that made you... Uh, realize that dreams are so important and that it was missing from everything else. Oh, well, you know, uh, 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 <laughs> uh, uh, I'm one of those people who had uh, uh, experience of divine luminosity, total and complete in dreams. That's enough. Mm -hmm. um, How old were you? You had a, a divine luminosity experience in a dream? Yeah. How old were you at the time? Well, Just curious. well uh, uh, the, the fullest was uh, July 22nd, 1955, which was just the other day. <laughs> um, 
How did it? How did it affect you? And um, well, let's stay with Don's question. Um, I I might uh, take an opposite point of view and say, well, you could have a divine luminosity. You could have a brilliant light experience in a dream. But you could also have one walking down the street and hits you. What about having it in the dream led you to the conclusion that he's asking about, which is that dreams have significance? Well, that, that, that's not a question. You can't have that question. Ah. You can't have that question. You can't have that question. Mm -hmm. Because after the experience, it's obvious. Yeah. Plus, that particular pier, it seems like the fact that you could re-enter, I don't know if it's the same dream you're talking about now, but there was a dream where you, that time, there will be time no longer dream, mm. where after, subsequent to that, that experience in the dream, Pierre could re-enter it any yeah. time, That's walking amazing. around, you yeah. know, sitting down, smoking a cigar, he could re-enter that. But he, I don't know about smoking a cigar, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Just at, by re repeating the logos, yes. he could mm. enter back into that um, brilliant light of being. It seems like that's going to be something that's going to yeah. say that dream was pretty heavy yeah, yeah, and yeah. significant. And Although an enlightenment experience in and of itself in a dream would seem to me like it would persuade me. Yeah? one of the most doubting people I know of. But an enlightened, a powerful enlightened experience in the dream. I like those people who have them on the toilet. <laughs> they really get into this. Yeah, there's a, there's a question that I've been uh, the toilet a lot. kind of curious about <laughs> since this uh, last weekend seminar. Regarding the uh, two or maybe three classes of enlightenment experience that you were talking about. Um, one um, the one that comes up more often in dreams is not the brilliant light, but the, you know, the one self, the, right? About which there are no images, you know, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but it's so obvious we ignore it, right? All the time. Yeah. And my, my guess is that uh, all of us every day have many moments of doing this. True. Uh, we're doing it all the time. True. But we're not crediting ourselves for doing it all the time. That's right. A lot of the other stuff coming in. Now, here's the thing, though. Um, just like Don asked about, uh, you know, at what point did it occur to you that dreams uh, were significant and worthy and valuable and meaningful and so forth? I want to ask... Um, well, first I'll preface it. I can't imagine myself in a thousand lifetimes ever catching that obviousness. Yeah. But you did. Yeah. How? Because right. it's so obvious, it's ignored. How did you? Oh, how well, did you catch it? Yeah. And when? Yeah. Well, you know, I uh, uh, stepped in that state as a uh, uninterrupted state for quite a while. And saw that you were in it, hmm? and saw that you were in yeah. it. No, oh, yes or no? Yeah, because it's, it can't be dual, so you can't have an observer of it. No, except afterwards, perhaps. Um, now, see, that's see the the important thing of putting names on things is absolutely essential. Right? Justification of names. Right? How often do we say, okay, now, what would you say? Like, with the, what are you going to say to your mother? What are you going to say to these people? You have to put it into words. Without words. A logos. That's right. Because by doing that, you recover your own logos that you silenced. Yes. See, the everyday world is what's dominating it is the pathologos. 
social, political, spiritual, all the whole thing. And therefore, dreams break through. But um, that's, uh, I really appreciate that and respect that and agree. But, um, mm. I still have my question. At what point did you, uh, at what, you know, well, you said you had this enduring, you were in it yeah. for a while, mm -hmm. and you could see that you either were in it or had been in it. Yeah, a couple of years. A couple of years straight. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really answer my question, and here's the reason it doesn't. Hmm? It, that still, even if, it's, even if it has duration, it does not answer my question, which is, uh, at least I'm not following, because the whole point of it is that it's not obvious. It's very easy. So even if it lasts for a while, you still got to go ignore. No. Uh, yes or no. So what wakes one up to, no. regardless of duration, no. Unless you put a name on it, it's not yours. Okay, so that's your answer from before. After I had one of these things, I was, I was a, 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 a danger to society. <laughs> this is what you were telling us in the... Whew, you know, I was just... <laughs> telling everybody their problems. Just... Right. Worse than that, yeah, but yes, to say the least. <laughs> and it uh, wasn't until then I went back to Hiroshi and he said, oh my God, you're... I said, oh, is that what it is? That's what it is. Oh, thanks. But you never found out what they said. Uh, that's okay. I didn't care. <laughs> that was enough. What, what's, what was their, what was their uh, therapy? Uh, astonishment. <laughs> that was enough for me. I said, okay, I don't care what you call it. I'll take that astonishment. <coughs> that was their label for it? No, that was just Well, label. there's a whole a big story behind it some other day. <laughs> well, you gave, a, you gave, Pierre, you did say about it before that when you told, what was it, my Zoomy? that he went rushing you back and broke into the dokasan oh, room, right. and that never happens. Right, right. And therefore, that, is there a certain that inherent you judgment yeah. in that? That woke you up. You went, okay, something must be going on here. Well, several, in that exchange, there were several things that made it obvious. Okay. So, it was nice to finally get the word, but... And so that word... Putting that word on it. Yeah, I said, oh, that's what we're going to mm -hmm. Thank you. So, uh, that still qualifies for dialogue. Mm -hmm. Meaning it required... A, a, it needs a name. Another, needs Justification and name. It required another person. That's right. You couldn't, you couldn't recognize it alone. Yeah. Wow. What, what name did you put on it? Mm. <laughs> One of them. And, and what, what did it do to, to do that? That's what a name does. <laughs> it settles things. It settles things. And yet they have, the, 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 at least the Zen tradition has no appreciation for that. Mm -hmm. They have no appreciation for the importance of the... That's true. They don't. Except... And yet they're doing it. They yeah, did, they well, <clears throat> that's because they have a belief they don't know they believe is wrong, and they don't know when it's being contradicted by their own people. So they have a lack of awareness. Well, see, the Japanese Zen Buddhists in the United States that are have their uh, source back to my Zoom in L.A. Right. He followed Yasutani. <coughs> and Yasutani said, 
thinking is the disease of the mind. It's illness. Thinking is disease. And he repeats this right as so. And so do these guys. But they never read his book. Because in his book he says, I don't mean, by the way, just thinking happens to be a disease. I just mean belief. Hmm. It's there. That's better. They never read it. Their own book. Well, that's people. People who don't appreciate the logos. Yeah. Oh, don't, don't, don't appreciate the logos. Yeah, there was a lot of thinking going on that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot going on in those days. <laughs> right, David? <laughs> you tell you. Find your way through a clear spot. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty safe we close up the drum. Yep. Thank you, Pierre. Okay, okay. All right. Thank you. Can we clean up the table?